Hello and welcome to this Bond Solon video to discuss virtual interviewing and its potential during the current climate. Uh, and welcome today to be joined by Jim Sullivan. Uh, Jim, would you be uh, happy to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, Chris. Um, my name's Jim Sullivan. I'm the lead trainer in advanced investigative interviewing for Bond Solon. I've held that position with the company for 10 years. Fantastic. Thank you, Jim. Now, before we get into the crux of discussing virtual interviews, I'd love to get your personal perspective on, uh, on virtual interviews. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Um, when this first came in, obviously with the advent of COVID, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I was initially very sceptical. Uh, I had two main reservations. The first res reservation that I had was, would it work in the first place? Would virtual interviewing have the necessary impact? Um, and secondly, and more personal to me, was whether I'd be able to conduct interviews virtually. Um, obviously, I come from, if you like, the older school uh, of investigation, and this was a real big change. Well, I can honestly say that my opinion on it, the scepticism has completely gone. Uh, I've changed. I've, I've made a 360 degree U-turn. Um, it does work and I am able to deliver it and the company are definitely able to deliver it. Um, I think what's really good about it is we're, we're actually training for reality because this is the situation we, we find ourselves in. So yes, it's personal perspective, it's excellent. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you for that, Jim. That is slightly surprising because as, as I understood it, being in the room, conducting an interview is, is much better. Is there any benefits of doing virtual training or is it negative? Yeah, I mean, what we found is in certain circumstances, a face-to-face -face interview would be necessary. Uh, it would depend on the severity of the incident, and it may well be necessary that you would need to, to, to interview face-to-face. -face. But the technology is so good now, Chris, with the advent of the different functions that are available. You can create a scenario when you pin the individual that you're interviewing, you can create a scenario which is an incredibly good second best to face to face. Now, when we talk about benefits, there are numerous. Um, take the COVID aspect. Just think of health and safety generally. Interviewing people over the internet has got to be far safer. You remove the travel implications. You remove the potential dangers there of people driving on motorways to go to meetings, etc. There's also the potential for hostility in an interview. Some people don't enjoy being interviewed. There's always that potential. That is removed because you can exit from an interview at the click of a button. So there are massive advantages in them, in, in those positions. But also, if you think about the actual time that you can save by setting these interviews up, um, you can get a group of people together very, very quickly from all corners of the globe, effectively. Uh, very cost effective, very beneficial for organizations. Okay, well, it's, it's interesting because I'm certain there's some thoughts there that, that haven't been taken into consideration previous uh, to COVID and, uh, and now here. But with regards to the actual interview itself, what are the big differences between being in a room with someone and, and doing it as we are now? I mean, when we talk about the differences, I think, to be honest, Chris, it's probably easier to talk about the similarities, if I'm being honest, because like I said, once you're familiar with the functions that you have available, you can create very much a one-to-one, -one, which effectively is what we're doing now over the internet as we, as we speak. Um, the camera can be used. You can actually pin the individual that you're, you're interviewing. So they occupy the whole screen. You don't even have to look at yourself if you're self-conscious at all whilst you're interviewing. So there's massive advantages from there. And um, what I would say... When I talk about differing from face-to-face -face and I talk about similarities, the core skills of a good interview are still extremely relevant when you interview online. I always believe that to be a good interviewer, there's four things that the interviewer must be good at. One is the ability to build rapport. And again, that can be done over the internet. Having built rapport, good interviewers have to know the right questions to ask. They have to be good with regard to their questioning technique. And again, this is something that can be exercised and utilized over the internet. Good interviewers are good listeners. We listen motivationally. 
We don't just listen with our ears, we use our body language to encourage people to carry on talking. That's what a good interviewer does. A good interviewer can change the turn taking time. And again, these are things that are achievable over the internet. And the fourth core skill of a, of a good interviewer is the ability to make accurate notes and record what's actually being said. And again, this is all can be utilized on this platform. So when we talk about differences, I honestly believe it's easier to, if you like, amplify the similarities. That, that's an incredibly good point. And Joe, I do agree with you on quite a number of those aspects there. But I think the one question that we get an awful lot around this is that the reason we're having this chat now, that virtual interview, was because of COVID and the changes that that's having on investigators. When we return to the new normal, as it were, a virtual interview is going to be part of that. We are allowed to be back in the room with people. Are we not just going to do face-to-face -face interviews then? Absolutely, Chris. Um, having had the benefit of delivering this training now for over 12 months to multiple and numerous clients across, across the spectrum of clients that we have, the client base, I know that a lot of organisations are already planning on continuing using the virtual platform to conduct most of their interviews. So in other words, there is very, very much going to be a place for virtual interview. I don't think it will completely replace face-to-face, -face, but it's certainly going to be a very, very good second option and will be utilised. And I know that from what other clients have told me. Okay, fantastic. And I guess actually it's going to be used in a similar way to um, interviews that are done by a letter at the moment. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, some organisations have in the past used correspondence interviews by writing letters. Others have made telephone calls. When you compare the benefits of a virtual interview against them, the virtual interview wins by a mile, it wins by a street. Um, you would only have to turn this camera off now and continue this interview that we're having, Chris, and you would see the significant difference in not being able to see the person. So. Regarding top tips, you know, a little takeaway for people. What I would say, what I have learned over the 12 months is one of the most important things is to make sure that you have a good, strong internet signal. I've also found that an Ethernet cable has been really good. I've got strong internet connection at home, but I've, I now use an Ethernet cable, which effectively creates the hard wire, which has provided a really good signal strength for me. I would suggest we need to be both competent and confident in the peace model of interview. The peace model of interview was written way back in 1992 by a forensic psychologist, but it's amazing how easy it is to adapt it to the world of virtual interview. And it's almost as though Dr. Eric Shepard had this in mind. Maybe he was a man who could look to the future, but it works. I think another thing we need to remember is if we're interviewing under PACE, the potential challenge could come from a Section 78 challenge later on at court. That challenge is around the fairness of the proceedings. What we have to do is make sure that everything we do is fair, open, transparent and equitable. I would suggest you plan for a virtual interview exactly the same as you would for a face-to-face but then encompass the functionality of the equipment to enable things like disclosure, separate meetings, perhaps with solicitors or other third parties. They can be created by the use of breakout rooms. So being fully aware of the functionality, the capability, um, the recording facilities, the ability to create captions and transcripts. I think once you've, once you've encompassed those skills, it really is the future. It's not just the future, Chris. I think it's the here and now. Jim, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to, to be with us today and, and give us some details on, on virtual interviews. Always a pleasure, Chris. Always a pleasure. Thank you.